This morning, we're going to talk about loving God and loving others. Now, February 14th is Valentine's Day. Because Valentine's Day is centered around love, that's what we're going to talk about this morning. A type of love that Valentine's Day is centered around is called Eros, which is the physical, sensual love between a man and a woman. Dating, engaged, and married couples all celebrate their love for each other on this day that's set aside. Single people usually struggle through the day. But there is a different type of love. This is the type of love that transcends all other types of love. It is called agape love. Agape love is designed, defined as selfless, sacrificial, unconditional love. There's no higher form of love found in the Bible. This type of love describes God's love for us. It should be the type of love that we strive to have for others. Dale Gall Galloway once wrote, Little Chad was a shy, quiet young fellow. One day he came home and told his mother he'd like to make a valentine for everyone in his class. Her heart sank. She thought, I wish he wouldn't do that. Because she had watched the children when they walked home from school. Her Chad was always behind them. They laughed and hung on to each other and talked to each other. But Chad was never included. Nevertheless, she decided she would go along with him, with her son. So she purchased a paper, glue, and crayons. For three whole weeks, night after night, Chad painstakingly made 35 Valentines. Valentine's Day dawned. Chad was beside himself with excitement. He carefully stacked them and put them in a bag and bolted out the door. His mom decided to bake his favorite cookies and serve them up warm and nice with a cool glass of milk. When he came home from school, she just knew he'd be disappointed. Maybe that would ease the pain a little. It hurt her to think that he wouldn't get many Valentines, but maybe none at all. That afternoon, she had the cookies and milk all on the table. When she heard the children outside, she looked out the window. Sure enough, here they came, laughing and having the best time. And as always, Chad was in the rear. He walked a little faster than usual. She fully expected him to burst into tears as soon as he got inside. His arms were empty, she noticed. When the door, when the door opened, she choked back the tears. Mommy has some warm cookies and milk for you but he hardly heard her words. He just marched right on by, his face aglow, and all he could say was, not a one, not a one. Her heart sank, and then he added, I didn't forget a one, not a single one. See, this demonstrates not just a parent's love, but God's love for us. It demonstrates the love that we are to have for others. God didn't forget one. He didn't forget one of us when he sent Christ to die on the cross. But it all starts with understanding love. We need to understand God's love for us, our love for him, and love for others. Therefore, we must first start by understanding God's agape love for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 spells it out. It says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, God's love transcends all of our understanding. It is hard for us to understand why God would love us so much that he would send his son to die for us. We were all born sinners because of Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden. And because of that, we're all were sinners before Christ came and before we became to know Him as our Savior. It is because of God's desire to reconcile us to Him. It is because of His love for us and desire to have us to know Him that He sent Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. That means that we didn't deserve God's love. And maybe we didn't even desire God's love. But just as we who are parents will do things
things because of our love for our children, even if they don't deserve it or even desire it. God's love caused Him to send Christ to be the ultimate sacrifice. Christ's sacrifice <laughs> just demonstrates the ultimate love that God has for us. God loves all. No matter our position in life, no matter our acceptance or rejection of Christ. That is why He sent Christ to die for us all. The Bible doesn't tell us that He sent Christ to die for a few. But He sent Christ to die for everybody. He told us in John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world. Not for God so loved a select few. But God loved the world. But it's up to us to accept or to reject that love. 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 and 10 says, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us. And sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. John tells us that those who do not know God do not know love. We may think they do. But they don't understand the true meaning of agape love without knowing God. The Apostle John had a totally different perspective than the other Gospel writers. When you look at him and you compare the words that John said and the words that Peter said throughout the Gospels, Peter focuses on his love for Christ. But John focuses on Christ's love for us. And he tells us that God is love. He doesn't say that God is a loving God or that love is God, but that God is love. And while it is true that God is a loving God, it's not just what He does, but it is who He is. See, without God, there is no love. John reminds us again that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die because of His love for us. And it's because of Christ that we can live and that we can love. God didn't do this because He knew that we would love Him. Because there are many that still reject Him. But He did it because of His love for us. And because of His love for us, we should in turn love Him. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 38 says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. See, Jesus had been asked, What is the greatest of the commandments? And He told us that we are to love God with everything that we have and everything that we are. We are to focus our lives on loving God. By loving God with our hearts, our desires and our affections are focused on doing what He calls us to do. By loving God with our souls, we are using our unique personalities, our talents and our spiritual gifts to glorify Him. We are using everything that we have to worship Him. By loving God with our minds, we are focusing our thoughts on Him, and we desire to learn as much about Him as we can through His Word. This is agape love from us towards God. It is a selfless, sacrificial love because we give up our worldly lives and we desire to serve Him. This is the greatest of the commandments. It covers the first four of the Ten Commandments that's given to us in Exodus chapter 20. Jesus told us how we can accomplish this type of love for God in John chapter 14, verse 21. And He says, Whoever has My commands and obeys Him, He is the one who loves Me. 
He who loves me will be loved by my, by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Whoever has the commands of Christ, that is anybody that has the Word of God, everybody that has a Bible and keeps them, shows their love for God and for Christ. Keeping His commands means that we are living the life that He calls us to live. We learn about this life by reading and studying God's Word. We obey these commands by doing what the Bible tells us to do. By going and sharing the Gospel. By making disciples. By loving our neighbor. By using our spiritual gifts to edify the church. And this list goes on and on. Understand that we will all make mistakes along the way. But when we do the best we can, through the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us, then we are obeying Christ's commands. When we do this, we are showing Christ that we love Him. Which in turn allows us to experience God's love and God's work in our life. And Christ, through the Holy Spirit, will make Himself known to us when we obey Him. Christ will give us the ability to have agape love. He will help us to keep His commandments. And He will give us His strength, His peace, and His love. How would the world, though, see that we love God? John, Jesus also answered this question in the book of John. In John chapter 13, verse 35, it says, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. People will know that we are disciples of Christ when we show others His love through us. When we love others as He commands us to do. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39 the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. The second greatest commandment, which covers the remaining six of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, is love for other people. We are to love others as we love ourselves. We are to love others as we love Christ. We are to show others the same love that God has shown us through Christ. Now when you read this that says love your neighbor as yourself, it doesn't say just love your Christian brothers and sisters, which is what we are supposed to do. But it tells us that we are to love everybody. We are to show everybody that we come across the love of Christ. We are to love others as Christ loved us. Christ loved us even though we may reject Him. Even though others may reject us and others may reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are still to love them. Love binds us together. Love binds us together as family. Love binds us together as Christians. Romans chapter 12 verse 10 says, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Brotherly love is another type of love that the Bible talks about. And the word, the Greek word for that is philip. It is a love that allows us to deal with weaknesses, imperfections, and problems. Brotherly love allows us to better communicate. It allows us to commit to each other, to build loyalty, and to forgive. This is a type of love that will bind a church together. This is the type of love that will help us to develop agape love for others. See, when we place the needs and the feelings of others above our own, we honor them. We love them with agape love when we do that, not just brotherly love. This is what we need to do in order to keep the second great commandment to love our neighbor. Loving others is obeying Christ. And we just talked about that. When we obey Christ and we do what He tells us to do, then we show Him that we love Him. 
Now the Apostle John talked a lot about love in his gospel and in his letters. John understood the type of love that God has for us and that we need to have for him and that we need to have for others. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 11 says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. As we looked at a few minutes ago, John told us, God is love. When we love others, we know God. It's only with God's help that we can completely understand how to love Him, but it's also with God's help is the only way that we can completely understand how to love others. With God, without God, it would be impossible to love others the way that Christ instructs us to love them. John emphasized that because of God's love for us, we should in turn love others in the same way. Now, you know and I know that some people just make it hard for us to love them. But sometimes we make it hard for God to love us, yet He still does. God's love for us never wavers. So our love for others, even though they may not make it easy for us, should never waver. We do this because we follow the example of Christ and we love them. We can love others as Christ loves. Now this type of love is not natural to us. It's not the type of love that we can develop, that we can learn. This type of love comes only from a relationship with Jesus Christ. It comes through the Holy Spirit. And that is the only way that we can learn to love others with agape love. With selfless, sacrificial, unconditional love. As our love for God grows, and our understanding of God's love for us grows, then our desire to love others will grow as well. As our love for others grow, then we will develop better relationships with those around us. So as John said, make every effort to love others. Matthew chapter 22 verse 40 says, All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. All of the commandments in both the New Testament and the Old Testament are followed simply by obeying the commands to love God and love others. With a better understanding of God's love for us, we can better demonstrate our love for Him and our love for others. Jesus told us that when we obey Him, we show Him and the world our love for Him. Love is a subject that is talked about a lot in the Bible. The Bible has been called the greatest love story ever told because it tells us of God's love for us and His willingness to sacrifice His Son. The Bible tells us who to love, how to love, who, and what love is. It tells us what love is not. It tells us what love does and what the love does not do. Love binds everything together. If not for God's love for us, we would not have salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen. I found this acronym for the word love. L stands for listening when another is speaking. O stands for overlooking petty faults and forgiving all failures. V stands for valuing other people for who they are. And E stands for expressing love in a practical way. God listens to our prayers. He forgives us of all of our sins. He treasures us as His children. And He loves us enough to send His Son as a perfect sacrifice in order to reconcile us to Him. That is is love. Agape love. There is no greater love. So this morning, 
Do you know the love of Christ? Do you love Him in return for His love and sacrifice for us? Do you love others as Christ loves you? If not, then you can. If you don't know God's love for you, you can accept His gift of love. You can accept salvation through Jesus Christ. Through Christ, you can learn how to love and obey Him. And you can learn to love others. Do you struggle to love others? It's easy for us to say that we love God. Sometimes it's hard for us to say that we love others. But if you struggle with this, you can bring it to God this morning. And you can ask Him to show you how to love others. But most importantly, if you don't know Christ, you don't know God. And if you don't know God, you don't know love. So this morning, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, give your life to Him today. Accept His gift of love. And He will show you how to love Him and how to love others. So this morning, if you need prayer for anything, as we sing our song of invitation, I ask that you come forward, lay it at the foot of the cross, and give it to Him who loved you enough to die.